you need to create a user and uh, I created a user called Navin, right? But today what we will see is you are a root user and you need to create you need to create users for a, a different a different users. Yeah. So how do you create it? Maybe uh, I have a question. No, uh, hold on. Uh, I'll give you a chance again. Okay? So when uh, you want to create users, right? Guess um, uh, be on mute. Eh? Any anything you want to do, you know, for uh, every, uh, any task that you want to do on Linux, see there is a there is a command through which you can get it done, right? So you want to create a user. For that, the command that you will use is user add. Okay. User add, and you will give the name of the user whom you want to create, and an account is created with that user. When you create a user, the user information is updated in three files. It is called etc password, etc shadow, and etc group. So any Linux or Unix environment, where is the whole user information stored? It is stored in these three files. In Linux, what happens is whenever you create a user, whenever you create a user, by default, with his name, a group also will be created. Meaning, if you create a user with name Ravi, a group also with name Ravi will be created by default. How many groups are created on the system? You can find it in this file. In etc, in the groups file. See, I told you day before yesterday that all the configuration files will be in the etc directory. Right? Other information of user, the whole information about the user, you can find it in this file. Once you create a user, you need to set a password for that user. And how do you set, uh, set the password? Using a command called passwd. Password for the users will be there in this file. Password will be there in the shadow file. Complete information about the user will be there in the in the in in this password file. Passwd file. Groups that are that got created on the Linux system, you can find it on this in, the, in this file. Okay. Of course, if you can create it, you will you should be able to delete it also, right? You want to delete a user, you'll say user. Okay. Every in uh, you know unique th this holds true in either Linux, Unix, any area, any any. Oh yes, you know, this, uh, this is all the Unix and Linux related stuff. This concept is here. So whenever you create a user, uh, for every user one identification number is given. Okay, for every user, you create a user with name Ravi, right? The moment you create user Ravi, for him one ID is given that is called UID. When you create a user Ravi, automatically a group called Ravi is also created. For that, a number is given that is called GID. Okay. UID, the number can be anything in the range of 0 to 65,000. Okay. 0 is given to the root user, so you cannot assign it. Till 1000, generally, even anytime you want to. You want to, you want to, you want to, you know, you yourself want to tell what is the identification number that you want to give to the user. 
don't give from zero to thousand. Uh, start from thousand till sixty-five thousand. You give any number, that's okay. Why I am telling actually zero to hundred, not even thousand, because those numbers are used for a lot of uh, you know default things that runs on your system, like different services and all that. You know, those are used. But just remember that in case anybody asks you anything. This information is good or enough, uh, you know, on the user um, management stuff. Now let me let me show you that you know how. Okay. You see the IP 192.168.0.9. I'll log in as root. Okay, so uh, let's say I want to create a user with name. You know, I was taking an example of Ravi, but let me create a user with name test. Okay, so how do you create a new user? You have to say user add test. Once you create a user, if this user has to log into the system, a password should be assigned to him otherwise you cannot log in to set password for test user you say password test okay i'll give some password let's say something like red hat with these two commands you created a new user and i told you that whenever any kind of user you create remove delete or anything you do with user three files are updated and those are etc password okay so come down you see this when i did user and test what it has done it created this file so what is the information that is there here is user is test you see a, a kind of a cross symbol here uh, meaning of that is telling that the password of this test user is there in the shadow file a number it has given to this user that is 1001 i told you right uid for every user one identification will be given uid similarly a group also got created with name test for that the number is given 1001 okay next is the comment section i didn't give any comment so it's it's blank and you see here yesterday i told you right for every user the home directory will be created in the home slash home so you see slash home test and the shell that is given to this user is bash that's a default shell where is the password stored now see this is the password it's an encrypted password right so naturally uh, you cannot do anything uh, but uh, make sure that you don't give anybody access to see this file okay in the shadow file only thing that you will see is the password that that you have assigned and you want to see the groups you see a new group is created with name test so these three files are important guys and generally uh, anytime you need information about any user on a linux system one quick way what you have to do is just give a command called id and the username you will get the whole information
attached uh, user. This is the UID, this is the GID, and the group is. Uh, and one other thing is now, let's say you logged in, you're working. Just you want to see as which user you logged in. You give command ID, it will tell you, you logged in as root. So anytime you want to cross check suddenly, okay, as a, which user am I working, you can give ID. Okay. Um, when so creating user is user add and, and and password you want to remove the user you are going to say user del hyphen m test test is the user whom i want to delete why i am giving hyphen m is if i give hyphen m it will remove the home directory also where is the home directory of the test user it is there in slash home slash test if I don't give this hyphen M, what it does is it will just remove the test user, but the home directory will not be deleted. So basically what happens under hood is if when you do a user del, that line, whatever you have seen for test user in, in, on, in the three files, password, shadow and group, those entry, those lines will be deleted. The moment the entries are deleted from those uh, from those files, it means the user is is it can no no longer log into the system so i'm telling it to remove even my home directory also okay oh that is i miss for creating i think right yeah one will get not i think not m i think uh, yeah hyphen r guess sorry okay user del hyphen r test so it will de delete the even home directory. okay so this is the only thing that you should know uh, on the user administration stuff okay so anytime any linux guy takes your interview and uh, or anybody and they ask you you know what files are updated and all that so you should know this information okay all right somebody was uh, asking question who was that uh, uh ravi it's me chandra yeah chandra, go ahead. yeah uh actually uh when i'm doing practice right i'm not able mm -hmm. to find my root user uh, i'm able to find uh, with the normal user no because you logged in into the you know system as a normal user okay, okay. Uh, i'll be coming to that next command uh, but for now what you do is just do su as you uh, you just do this command okay you do this command mm -hmm. just enter it on your system Yes. S, S U hyphen. Yes. Did you get the hash? Uh, pseudo password for Chandra. No. It's it's not allowing you. Yeah, it's not. It is not changing. Still, uh, pseudo password for Chandra one. Uh, yeah password. if it is not allowing you and you know the root password just gives su hyphen it will ask you root password you will become root okay so all right that anyways we'll become seeing this so this is the user administration stuff that you should do okay any questions guys anyone here <laughs> Hi, sir. Um, could you just help me out? Yesterday I was not able to attend the class and uh, they ended up sending me the wrong recording. So I don't know what changes you made in the virtual box and the putty. So could you just tell me and then I'll just make a Okay. Uh, same, I know. Uh, see what 
what uh, we have done yesterday yesterday we have gone through oh, the, some basic unix commands right so yes, here is here is the here is the problem you know see so it's along then an hour session right uh, of course i cannot repeat the whole hour session today i'll miss the the flow where we are going no, 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 I don't want you to repeat it. I just want you to tell me if I need to make any changes in the virtual box so that I can follow along. I mean, I don't want you to repeat what you did yesterday. Just tell me if you made any changes in the settings and then I'll just make those changes and keep it as it is. We didn't make any changes as it's uh, what we have done yesterday. See, you don't make any changes, by the way. You know, once you create a VM, you'll you'll will be working on that, right? Um, so if you are, if you had to follow today's class, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Nothing. It has nothing to do with yesterday's class. Okay, then that's okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. All right, guys. So next is uh, package management again. Okay? Okay, now just give me a minute. I'll be back. Just give me one minute. I'll put everyone on mute. So, um, Ravi, yeah. Uh, just before we go to package management, uh, see, some of us have got uh, this concern actually. Mm -hmm. uh, when you are connecting uh, to the VM via the putty, you are not uh -huh. able to connect. You are not able to connect actually. Okay. Uh, who is? Uh, can one of you share your screen? Who wants to do that? Yeah. Let's see. Okay. That's a uh, system. I Let understand. me do it for you. Yeah. Who's there? Priyam. All right. Okay. Let me make you presenter. Okay. Now you can share your screen. Okay. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, what you do now, okay? Uh, uh, okay, just come out of there. Okay. Just click it there. Yeah. Mouse. No, no. Um, yeah, yeah. No, uh, just uh, press escape. Okay, or else do one thing. Uh, use inside that white background you are seeing, right? Click there, your mouse. This one? Yeah, yeah. Click it there. Click your mouse. Yeah. Yes, yes, I click. No, no, I'm saying, uh, okay. No, no, I'm saying I want you to go to terminal. Okay. I don't want. Yeah. Click on okay. the control. Uh, uh, Click on the control. Or, 
control button no do one thing down you see a, a rectangular uh, white space uh, right next to that click that no 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 right side right side right 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 corner yeah click it there next next one next one click it next one uh, now go inside no no go inside right click Enter right click, click terminal. terminal last one all right uh, do uh one minute uh, i will see screen better now do ip ad ip space addr space show addr addr this is to see the ip address that is assigned to your system okay enter ip itself is not assigned to your system okay but usually it is connected on there wi-fi is, there is it. this is actually see uh, the laptop is connected on a wi-fi mm -hmm. and the vm is not getting when you're connecting on the wi-fi you're not getting the internet assigned i mean ip assigned to the vm that is no, the issue no. No, even i am also on that so what we'll do uh, go back to your oracle virtual manager all right uh, right click uh, cl close and say power off okay go to settings oh my uh, you know i should have really checked it guys i thought everybody <laughs> which were we working okay go to network attach to there you click it and select it. no 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 in attach to the drop box not, not, yeah, not select bridge no 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 select bridge adapter yeah click okay okay yeah now power on But even after doing this also, we have the same issue. I mean, I have the same issue. No, we'll, we'll fix it, right? Let, let's come, let yeah, it come yeah. up. Sir, I think you have to select the advanced also, sir. In that, I tried that and it's working for me. The advanced network. what you have done? In the network, click advanced and you should select uh, allow all. The, uh, yeah, I've done that. I've done that drop. also. And select yeah, that, the cable, yeah. cable connected as well. No, no, you don't connect the cable. I, I want the issue to be sorted out without the cable connected. No, I, even I didn't want the cable. Eh? Even I'm on Wi-Fi. You just have to select that. Then only I got the IP address. I've selected. Yeah, I've, did, I've done that. No, what you're telling is that promiscuous mode. Huh? Yes, yes, sir. No, okay, no, promiscuous mode is okay. That is basically just sending the packets and all that to uh, devices. Uh... Yesterday in the WhatsApp group. No, our, no, uh, uh, go to... Uh, guys, cancel it. No, no, no. Play it. Cancel it. Cancel it. Play it. Cancel it. Cancel it. Okay. Not click. Not listed. Yeah. Click root. Type root. Yeah. Next. 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 Give you the root password. Put it something very simple, yes, because you know your uh, system nobody mm -hmm. will log in, right? Mm -hmm. So, Ravi, uh, how to find out how to reset the password, root password? If you want to reset the like password, you, that password. <laughs> yeah, you say pass WD. Okay, all right, right click. No, no, come back to the no, 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 click the second uh, one only. That's okay. There are this one, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are like the four different planes. Okay, right click. Okay, o mm -hmm. open terminal. IP space ADDR space show. Okay. Now this one. Yeah. No, 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 not. Still, no, the IP is not coming. 
okay yeah so what sure. i will do now i'll give you a few commands guys okay for now for today just note it down uh, i'll be speaking about it probably today or tomorrow but let me give you some comments i think some firewall is blocking okay so what you have to do is comments what i'm giving just type it there uh, yeah okay type those four capital f capital f after hyphen immediately f okay after hyphen no space linux unix remember after hyphen no space anytime no 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 ip table space hyphen f Should I click in right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Chat box. Type system CTL stop firewalling. I'll explain these commands, guys. Okay. For now, just note it down. System CTL. Uh, space stop firewall D. Firewall D. After stop space. Enter. Yeah. System CTL disable firewall D. Seven four zero. Enter. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, set ten four zero. Can you spell it? E N F O R C space zero. Enter. D H yeah. client. D H client. D H client means we are telling okay. Once again, assign me an IP. Okay. Enter. Now do IP space IDD IDDR space show. You see, you got your IP now, right? What is it? 192.168.43.233. No, no, no. Uh, no when no. you are seeing your IP, you should see the number that is given Three. under ENP0S3. Only that one, okay? Uh, in your case, Priya, it is shown an, uh, under number two, right? So you see, I know. Yeah, that is IP. So mm -hmm. no, uh, take that IP now. Okay, take that IP. No need of slash 24. Take it till 192.168.43.233. Okay. Uh, now come out of this session. How do you uh, come out of this? Okay, yeah. Type it now. 192.168. I think 48.233, right? Mm. Yeah. Click open. No. Yeah, yeah. You are good. Go ahead. Okay. No, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Just do it again. Huh? It is not 48. It is 43. Okay. So now cancel this. Open one more session. Okay, okay, close it, close it. Okay, one open one more time, party. Your IP is 192.168.43.233, uh, 192 right? Just look, uh, see that screen one second. Yeah, I think dot 233, right? Guys, one more thing. Huh? 
uh, every time you reboot your machine this number will change okay Cl click accept this number will change okay uh, login as root enter give the password okay so you are good you can practice right okay. anybody else uh, anyone yeah, else? thanks Ravi. I, thanks thanks Ravi. yeah this yeah. is what okay uh, no my mistake actually i did this yesterday in the class i should have put it in the chat and told you guys that do this yeah uh, i'll explain now that what each line is but for today uh, till i come to those ip tables concept uh, just note down the steps yes uh, and if you don't get ip do it like this okay okay ravi okay. Uh, i have a problem with the one command cd uh, cd space boot cd space log when i am trying this uh, command i am getting no such file or directory okay who, who is that uh, uh Nizamuddin, right? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. I'll make you present and just share your screen. Uh... Okay. Oh, you're good. You logged in from party, right? Yeah. This. What is that? It is giving error. Uh. When I'm giving CD, yeah, type that, type that. What your CD dot Facebook? Okay, I'm getting like this. So correct, no such no, correct, correct. Why you are getting that is type PWD, just PWD. You are in I'm a root directory. If yes. you want to go to boot, I told you that either you have to give the complete path or go to the root and come right. Yeah. Where is boot there? Boot also is there under the main slash only, right? So you want to go to yeah. boot, you have to say cd space forward slash boot. Okay, got it. Right. So whenever you are doing a change directory, give the full path. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. All right. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, 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 no problem. All right. See, the next important thing is this package management. What I mean by package management is on a Linux system, how are you going to install any third party softwares? Rather than using the word software, I will use the word package. But it's pretty much the same. Uh, so let's say you, know, you want to install MS Office on Windows, then what you do? You download the MS Office software, then you click the TXE file and your MS Office get installed, right? In Linux, those these software, instead of calling it a software, we call it as a package. So how do you install a package in Linux? To install packages in Linux, more so on Red Hat, okay, there are two commands to do that. One is called RPM and one is called YAM. RPM is the command with which you can install the third party packages. Okay. Packages for your CentOS and Red Hat, they come with an extension of .RPM. So any software or I'll not use word software. I'll keep using word package. Uh, any package that you take for Red Hat uh, or CentOS, it will have an extension of .rpm. Okay. So you want to install the package. What you have to do is, for instance, uh, you, there is a there is a software called ABC. Okay, ABC .rpm. 
first you need to download this onto your system right this package after that to do the installation you have to say rpm hyphen i abc dot rpm i means install it will install it but what happens is when you give rpm hyphen i followed by abc dot rpm a blank screen will come uh, and once the installation is done again you will get your prompt back but uh, sometimes when you are doing a package installation which takes a lot of time to complete if you see the blank uh, screen you you start really wondering you know whether things are happening uh, properly or not so generally for any uh, unix commands what you can do is you can add something called v v means verbose so i'm telling see how much uh, what you are doing you know just display it on the screen so the moment you put v what your linux will do is it, it will instead of putting it blank it says installing then you are like eventually you are say oh, okay it's installing but how much amount of the installation is in progress if you want to see that you have to give h so generally if you just give hyphen i it is fine guys but generally i have an habit that always i'll give rpm hyphen ivh you also give that so anytime i ask you to install a package you do rpm hyphen ivh followed by the package name okay so what we will do now is let me download uh, uh, one package for uh, okay uh, for us to, for me to demonstrate so what we'll do is i'll say go to your uh, go to your go to google and say centos centos 7 packages you will get a link here okay so this is uh, the link where all the packages that you require for centos os le level okay meaning um, at, for your um, os related stuff you you will find it here pretty much these are more than enough uh, you know you see there are hundreds of packages here so right so these all packages that are already there inside your system if something is missing you can download it from here to demonstrate uh, one thing let me take one file okay let, let this come so first thing is i should download it right so I'll, let me take a small one i think you know there is a a, a package called okay okay there is a package called links this is a very small one i'm taking so this package you see it is having extension of dot rpm so what i want to do is i want to download this okay so there are two ways how you can download you can click this link then it will copy it into your windows machine from your windows machine you can copy to the linux machine okay from windows if you want to copy to linux you need to install a software called winscp i'll show you that but let me do this before okay now i don't want to do that you know copy to windows windows to linux i want to download it directly onto my linux system so you can use a command called wget what this command wget does is anything you want to download over uh, internet and you know, over http you can directly download it using wget so if you see it has downloaded it has downloaded this package right it has downloaded this package it is having an extension of dot rpm you want to install this package you will say rpm hyphen ivh okay and you type just one two characters and after that you type tab you the whole thing will come you see this why are you getting this warning this one preparing is because you gave hyphen v this progress you are seeing it because i gave hyphen h it's just that it is a small package so the installation happened very fast so any package i ask you to install you first download it onto the linux system 
and then do an rpm hyphen ivh or it could be just rpm hyphen i also is fine no need of eh not only linux you know any os anytime you install any software or any packages you know guys by the way it's a interchangeable word software or package okay any package you install it's always a good habit that you know when you install this package what all files and directories that it has created so anytime you want to know uh, what pack what files this uh, this package has created okay you just give rpm hyphen ql and name of the package no need to this is a version guys okay whatever it is given here it is a version no need of that just give the package name you see when you install the linux these are the different files that it created okay always make uh, you know remember that any soft package that you install in linux it comes with a corresponding configuration file you want to change the behavior of the package or the you know you can change it from the configuration file and how do you do that or where is that configuration file there you know it is here okay it will be in the etc directory okay. so what does hyphen q and l do q means query l means list when you give rpm hyphen ql with the name of the package it will list all the files and directories that this package has created now in any time you want to know what all packages are installed on your system you should say qa q means query a means all these are the different packages that are installed what i want to do is i want to see whether this package linux is installed or not okay then what i have to do i have to do qa and i have to keep scrolling up and see if there is any linux lynx anywhere here if i keep it doing like this it will take an hour <laughs> time for me to do right so i want to see from the output of this command if there is any lines having the content ly nx so what we'll do is rpm hyphen qa you should use pipe pipe means the meaning of pipe in unix is the output of this command is going to be the input to the next command in linux and unix there is a command called grep what the grep will do is it will search the lines with the word whatever you give okay what is the word i want to search the output of this will become input i want to search for the lines where this linx is there i'll give an option called hyphen i hyphen i means case insensitive it could be lowercase uppercase anything is okay linx show me so you see that it says that there is a line with name so how do you find out anytime any software or any package is installed on your linux system that could be oracle mysql anything if you log into a system and you want to little quick check it just give, do it like this now if it is oracle just say grep minus hi oracle if you get a line it means it means you know it is already installed So this is a very important command. So remember RPM hyphen IVI to install hyphen QL to see what all files and folders got created. QA and grep that what is a grep? Grep is a command which will search different lines of the output if it can find any line with this word LYNX. And it did find it, so it, it, it displayed it here. And, and later let's say you you after some time you feel that you want to uh, remove this package you want to remove this if it is windows what you will do we'll go to the control panel and we'll remove it right if you want to remove it here you will say hyphen e and just give the, no need to give the full name you just give the the main name here that is sufficient what is hyphen e hyphen e will remove the software hyphen i will install hyphen e will remove it hyphen ql you can see all the files what got created uh, and later you want to delete it you can do a e okay there are two things that uh, are little bit 
problematic with this RPM one is whatever RPM you want to install whatever package you want to install it you should download it first onto your system second thing is see I have taken an example of a package uh, Linux this is actually a, a, some browser okay uh, it is a very very small package it has no dependencies so it worked great if this package had some kind of a dependencies then what it will do is it will throw the error saying that all those dependent packages install it first then what I should do I should download all those dependent packages I should install all that only then the installation will complete these are the two problems otherwise it's a great command but anybody ask you, you know how do you do the installation on Linux system you'll say RPM one other method to do that is using M so what M does is this it will install there is an alternative command called M what it does is it will install the package it will only download it for you and if any dependent packages are there for this package it will only download that also for you everything it does it for you that is M okay uh, I think maybe we'll do it tomorrow so uh, I'll go a little slow for next two three days guys so that you guys just pick it up a little bit from after that you know my flow your flow will be same okay all right guys any any questions